Trinity Accounting Scholars. Welcome to Chapter 8, Section 2. Hey, we're going to talk about periodic and perpetual inventory systems. Uh, these are two types of ways to record your inventory purchases and usage, and it uh, it really depends on the uh, type of business you have, which ultimately will determine what type of inventory system you use. But let's uh, let's get started here and talk a little bit about the differences. Well, first of all, periodic uh, derives from the word period, uh, and the inventory in a periodic system is is uh, the, the ending inventory and the cost of, uh, of the goods sold associated with that inventory uh, are determined at the end of the period. Now the difference here between periodic and perpetual is the cost of goods sold and the inventory are basically tracked on a continuous basis. Uh, so you, you would know at any given point I'm looking at your accounting records exactly what your inventory values are and your inventory usages. So, um, how are these inventory activities actually recorded in a periodic system versus a perpetual system? Well, most of the activity in a periodic system occurs in the purchase related accounts. Uh, you would debit. Uh, the debit your purchase uh, account in the periodic system, you would credit your accounts payable account in a periodic system. That would be for a purchase. For a return or allowance, uh, you would debit your accounts payable account and you would credit your purchase returns and allowances. Now for freight costs that would typically be associated with getting the inventory to you as well as insurance. Uh, you would debit your freight in costs and or and or insurance in costs and you would credit your accounts payable. Now that's a periodic system. How would it work in a perpetual system? Well in a perpetual system as opposed to uh, in the purchase situation, as opposed to debiting your purchasing it, your purchases account, you basically would debit your inventory account um, as soon as the transaction occurred. You would also, similar to the periodic system, uh, you would credit your account's payable account in the perpetual system. Uh, in terms of freight and re and I'm sorry, in terms of return or allowance, you would debit. The, uh, the accounts payable as similar to what you did in um, the periodic system but you would credit the inventory uh, account uh, and then last but not least as it relates to freight and insurance uh, you would specifically here again debit the inventory account uh, and credit the accounts payable okay so um, We've talked about uh, periodic and perpetual inventory systems. We talked about how those, uh, how the accounting transactions are recorded. Now we're going to talk about different ways of valuing uh, inventories, and specifically, we're going to talk about the net price versus the gross price method. Now, uh, the primary differences here between gross price and net price is in the gross price, you're valuing the inventory uh, at the at the list, essentially the list price of the inventory, uh, the purchases and and purchase returns and allowance are recorded at gross price. And gross price is really another term as similar to list price. When you actually do take the discounts, um, this is very important, 
they are recorded separately. It's probably a, you know a, a more conservative method of, of accounting for your inventory. On the other hand, net price uh, is basically re requiring that you uh, record the discount uh, even before you take it. So it's it's as if you you were uh, uh, assuming that you're going to take the discount and purchases and purchase returns and allowances are recorded net uh, of the available discount. So you actually you actually value your inventory by taking the discount. Um, if you, for some reason, don't take the discount and you take a loss on it, you, you would basically um, record that transaction separately. So uh, uh, let's let's take a a quick example here of gross price and net price. Uh, in this particular case, uh, let's uh, let's say there were three events that occurred. Um, you're an ABC company, and you buy nine thousand dollars of inventory with terms of two ten net thirty. Uh, by two ten net thirty, here we, these are business terms that you may have seen before. Basically, the two stands for two percent discount if you pay within 10 days. If you don't pay within 10 days, then the net um, is due, uh, the total amount is due without the discount in 30 days. And that's the end slash 30. Okay, so the second thing that happens in your company is you pay $200 for freight to obtain the inventory. The third thing that happens in your ABC company uh, is they ship you some bad inventory. It's the wrong color. So you basically uh, have to return it, and you basically are a smart little business owner, and you pay for that inventory within the um, within the discount um, period. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look at how the gross price uh, uh, might be recorded here. Um, in this particular example, in fact, uh, uh, why don't you take a shot here? Why don't you make the assumption that you're going to be the accountant for ABC Company, and uh, write down on your in your notes here how you would record these transactions. Uh, go back to the example of the record of events on the video. Uh, this particular slide. And figure out how you think these events might be recorded on this particular chart. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've done that. That is in your notes. Uh, and if you did that correctly, your chart should look something like this. Gross price and this is on a periodic basis. Uh, you see the nine thousand the for purchases, uh, debit, credit to accounts payable. Same thing with freight in and cash. Same thing with accounts payable and returns. And then you see with the gross price uh, approach that the discount is taken at the end. Now. Let's uh, let's do net price on a periodic basis. Um, here again, uh, go back to your original sheet where we have the record of events. Now, with the net price, how would you record it uh, if ABC Company buys nine thousand? dollars of inventory with terms of 210 and 30. Um, well, because it is that price, you would record that as the value of that inventory at the net price basis. Um, your freight in basically would be recorded the same way. Your accounts payable uh, returns would be recorded um, at the net price.
times basis and um, you should have a chart now that you build this out I'll stop and take a shot at this okay I'm assuming you've taken a shot this is what your chart should look like at this point in time and so you could see under the gross price scenario the the inventory was recorded at nine thousand uh, dollars under net price it's automatically assumed that you're going to take the discount and you record it recorded it at the let the value less the discount of 88.20 freight in cash would look the same on the two um, on the two charts accounts payable um, or the returns again would be valued at the net price amount and your accounts payable then basically looks pretty much the same um, as in terms of your your cash account as your gross price basis all right guys we're going to end it here um, make sure you understand this net price gross price scenario make sure you understand perpetual versus periodic and um, you'll probably be seeing a quiz on it tomorrow have a great night